you everyone for being here and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is uh, Mashal Muslim. I am a PhD candidate at University of Minnesota. And my research interest focus, focuses on uh, improving the quality of map services, uh, map services like routing, navigation, and uh, all these kinds of stuff. Uh, it's my pleasure today to share with you one of the tools that we needed uh, during our research. So therefore we built it. And today I'll be sharing with you so the community, hopefully the community can uh, use it and uh, build, build on top of it. So the tool is named RASID and it's a scalable dashboard for monitoring road network updates in OSM. I'll get into the details in, in, in a minute, but let me quickly uh, give you the outline that we will talk about. I'll start with the motivation and what are the queries supported by RASID and then what is the architecture for RASID and then quick experimental results. And then I'll show you a quick demo for RASID in, in action. So starting with the motivation, uh, I guess you guys all here, like you know OSM, so I don't need to convince you how important it is OSM, but in other situations, like I have to convince people how important it is that the MAB and OSM because it, 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 uh, it power uh, plenty of uh, applications. And because of this importance, there are a lot of researchers that try to analyze the map, try to analyze OSM in order for uh, to have like a quality assessments and so on. However, all of those uh, uh, analysis and studies usually focused in local regions, like it's not global. Usually it, it's like limited by sp specific region. And why is that? Because OSM, as we all know, has huge amount of data. So for example, if you look at the full history of changes since the beginning of OSM until now, there are more than 12 billion updates uh, in the map. And if you look at the uh, uh, full data uh, full, uh, full data file and compressed, it's more than three terabytes of data. So that make, makes it for researchers who want to study all this amount of data is like very difficult unless they like have very deep technical skills uh, to process such amount of huge data. Uh, so. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, existing surveys and studies for analyzing the uh, data in OSM is not scalable. It's always limited to a certain area. So here comes RASID. It aims to provide a global scale and comprehensive and highly interactive analysis uh, for the uh, data in, uh, in OSM. Uh, so therefore, like researchers can, can uh, uh, use it. What kind of uh, analysis and how does RASID help map analyzer in this case? So, uh, uh, so the use case that we needed, we wanted to see how often the roads are changing in OSM globally and in the US. So uh, the, the reason we, we needed such a question because we were working on, uh, uh, on uh, trying to convince uh, people that we need to work on the map and they said, no, it's a stable, there is no much of changes. Uh, the road and the map in the US is almost stable. So we needed to show them how often the road is being uh, updated. So that could be like new add, add, addings to, to the map or updates to existing uh, existing uh, roads, not only like their topological data, but also including their metadata. So the road can stay, I mean, without change, but you add new metadata about speed, about uh, restriction and the direction and so on. So the goal here is uh, to show the number of updates uh, uh, with statistics. So uh, we can see how often it changes, uh, the map is changing with various query scenarios that allow you to compare countries, to focus on certain type of roads or certain areas, uh, either like large period of time or sm small period of time. So there's like numerous numerous query scenarios. And uh, RASID supports like all the uh, uh, history of uh, OSM data. So uh, it's almost 16 years of worth of data. And all of that is scalable and interactive dashboard. And when I say interactive dashboard, I mean each query that we'll see examples of them just in milliseconds. Uh, so that's a quick motivation. Uh, let me show you an example of RASID uh, analysis queries. Uh, but first of all, I want you to imagine that we want to have such a table. So this is just an imaginary table. There is no table like this in, in OSM. So we're going to imagine uh, constructing. We call it example update list. So think of the phone. We have a date of something changed in OSM. Uh, the country, the road type, like service, uh, residential roads, and so on. And then the type in OSM, way, no stats, uh, et cetera. And the type of update, whether it's a new or a topological uh, update uh, on the on the road, or is it like just a metadata or tax update, and then the precise location and the change set ID. So uh, the goal, uh, the quiz is like you can have any aggregation on those columns highlighted by the red rectangle. So 
five columns. So for uh, and then you have aggregation on those columns, and then you have filters on them as well. So let's say give me uh, only on USA or like a, a, a period ranging from 2021 to 20, uh, to right now, for example, or only service road or service and residential. So any filters you want on those columns, any aggregation on those columns. Uh, so, and the goal find the number of updates in OSM and their percentage, like per country or comparison between them and so on. Uh, quick example. Uh, so, uh, maybe a quick show of hand how many you guys know SQL query to query databases. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, if you know SQL, maybe you can understand this. But if you don't know SQL, don't worry about it. We are not using SQL. It's just like illustration what are they created. So, think, uh, look at the textual example, like find the number of newly created or modified nodes, ways, relation for each country and uh, for each country wrote report in 2021. And Rafa will give you this visualization so you can see uh, uh, the top countries and the number of updates and so on. So to give this uh, to give this visualization result, believe me, it's not easy, especially when you know the amount of data that uh, I just like uh, showed before. Uh, if you have a relational database and you run this SQL, it will take a long time to answer uh, this query. So that's an example. Uh, so RAS queries are always supported in order of millisecond. That to in, in, enable interactive uh, visualization and interactive dashboard. Another example, compare the percentage of daily changes in road network between uh, Germany, Singapore, and Qatar. A third example, find the number of newly created or modified element types and so on. So these are all examples of the queries that we aim to answer. So how does RASA do this? So it has four main components, uh, data collection and processing that takes uh, daily uh, data from OSM, and then second and third component, storage and indexing and query execution, which are the main, uh, uh, the key components in the system. And finally, the user interface will show, we'll see it in a quick demo. So first of all, the data collection. So we get the uh, Planet OSM file. There are a bunch of uh, contributors uploading to it every day. So we get every day the diff data. And I think yeah, most of us are familiar with those uh, data. So we get the daily diff. We get the change sets every day. And then, uh, so from those, we can construct uh, those columns from the table. So we get the date and country of our type, element type, that one of change set ID. For those who, know, who doesn't know the diff data, it's like a daily file uh, prepared by OSM that shows, shows the elements that have been updated compared to the day before. So we collect that every day. And then we have one more column that we need to access to. So if we want to know the previous version, uh to the uh, to the uh, uh element of osm without like issuing queries so we get uh, the full history every every while so in our case we run it every uh, month we call it the monthly crawler so we can compare the different versions of it so we have this update list u and then next uh we want to like uh, this table is created every day so we keep appending this table at the end of the day it's going to be a huge table so that's the need for the storage and indexing the goal of this module is when you have a query, you send it to this module, and this module read the data from daily updated lists in a certain way, such that it just generates very few I.O. And for those of us who have dealt with databases, the less I.O. you have, the faster the, the query you have, so, uh, the faster the query, the, uh, the query results. So it's very important to have as minim minimum, minimal number of I.O.s as possible. Uh, so how we do that, we construct uh, a hierarchical temporal index that is uh, shown in this picture. I'll explain this index uh, 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 quickly. So the nodes in the index are data cubes. And what are those data cubes? Are basically aggregations uh, for the number of updates. Uh, so uh, we have a four dimensional data cube. Uh, we have like uh, around 300 country, 150 road types, four updates type, and three element types. So the, 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 like the value on each cell in the cube is basically the number of uh, updates in OSM uh, corresponding to those uh, those elements. Think of it like if it is a two-dimensional table, so you have like say country and dates, then imagine it's a three-dimensional cube and then four four-dimensional cube. So each cube has uh, more than uh, half a million uh, pre-computed values and uh, it's uh, around four megabytes on disk. And those four, uh, who knows databases, uh, it's very important that each dead item always fit in one page. So the way uh, these numbers are designed so that each cube can fit in one disk page. Uh, 
Uh, and then uh, 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 we have four levels of these cubes. One of them for, uh, for one of the levels are for daily cubes. Then we have a replicated level of weekly cubes and then monthly cubes and yearly cubes. Uh, just a quick stats. Uh, so in total, we have 7,000 nodes, 4 billion aggregated values. The whole index is roughly about 28 gigabytes. And then to maintain this index, uh, we have a daily updates that are being added to it. There is no update. Uh, there is no update to previous values because these are corresponding to changes to OSM. Uh, so if a change has happened, you don't need to recount it. It's already there. Uh, so that's the uh, maintenance of the index. Uh, second, third component is the query execution. Okay, so we have a, a query now. Like find the number of updates in each country and time window. So the query goes in two phases. Uh, first of all, retrieve the queues that satisfy the time period. And this is a disk base, you retrieve it from this. And then slice the cube to get the dimension that you are, you are interested in. And this is in memory. So the main bottleneck is in the disk based one. So we need to optimize it. So we do two levels of optimization. One is caching and second is level optimization. Caching is the main idea is, okay, let's keep the cubes that are frequently asked in memory. So you don't have to go to disk and bring them back because it's always costly to go to the disk and bring them back. So keep them in memory. So that's caching. Uh, the rationale is the more recent uh, days or uh, periods, the more frequent, the, the, the higher the probability that uh, you want to ask about them. So uh, keep uh, keep uh, the most recent cubes. Of course, we can control like the resolution between the four levels, which uh, cubes uh, daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly to keep in memory. Uh, for the level optimization, again, so that we have the query, find the number of updates during the period from January 1 to February 15, that's 46 days. So if you have these cubes daily, weekly, monthly, so there are three possible ways to answer the query, either read all the daily cubes or read uh, six weekly cubes and then four daily ones and aggregate them, or one monthly cube, one weekly cube and eight daily. So the cost is in the number of cubes retrieved from the disk. So here we see 46, 10, 10 and an optimizer will choose 10 cubes. However, uh, this optimizer is cache aware. So remember, we said like we have some of the cubes in the memory, so we have to take into consideration what cubes are in memory. So let's assume we all have all the daily uh, or the most recent cubes, uh, daily cubes in memory. So the cost for all daily will become zero disk IOs because all are in memory. So that's what uh, give you the best answer. User interface is uh, basically what takes the input parameter and uh, uh, shows you like various visualization, uh, either ta tabular uh, charts and so on. Uh, I think I'll I'll show you a quick demo and I will skip the experimental results uh, in favor of like letting you see uh, the actual page. Uh, so I have a, uh, so the Brasid is available online. Uh, you can access it at rasid.cs.umn.edu. And I'll play the video, it's a recorded video, but it's available online the same way. So you start by uh, defining the a, uh, time of interest that you want to see the number of changes for. So here, I, I guess from 21, uh, 2020 uh, until 2021, so almost a year, select what type of codes you're interested in, and then hit query data. As you can see, so each interaction you will see now is basically a query going to the data and so all of them are in a few milliseconds. So here are the number of updates per country. As always, like you can see, the US almost 19 million updates uh, during uh, this period. You can see them, you can filter them in <coughs> areas, locations, US, and other uh, parts of the, of the world. You can see all the number of updates or visualize them as, as a chart. Uh, yeah, like you see, like you can see how many ways have been created, have been modified, uh, uh, relation notes, and so on. You can see for us you can see like first day or use this as kind of uh, intuitive uh, uh, time lapse to see how how updates are happening in the in the us across the video that uh, is defined a third visualization uh, can be seen now uh, uh, okay yeah if you select a certain country then you can see uh, the updates for that particular country uh, here, like we see the road side. So service roads are among the top one being really changed or updated frequently in the US. The maintenance, uh, because highways are almost like, it's there for a while, so they are not updated, but maybe services uh, and residential roads are being created or being added to the map. Uh, 
fourth view shows you a uh, quick time uh, time series uh, chart to see how things are uh, changing across the time. Uh, for the sake of giving you time to uh, have questions, uh, yeah, you can uh, see individual updates like based on the filters that you have. Uh, you can see like sample of those updates, and it will take you uh, a link to uh, Overpass to see the exact update that matches your uh, query filters. Uh, yeah, you can also do the same for tags or metadata. We call it metadata like max speed and so on. And yeah, with that, uh, I uh, conclude and thank you so much. <laughs>